To bring a little more reality to our model, the first thing we need to do is define a specific processing time in our event controller. For this, we double-click our event controller, select Settings, and establish an end of 1 or 1 day. Now we select Apply. For those of you who are accustomed to other simulation tools that require the use of seconds and want to continue working in that mode, you could also enter 86,400. But it is easier to work with a more realistic term of measurement like days, hours, and so on. Now let's go ahead and run our simulation by clicking the Start button and see what our production throughput looks like for one day. Once the simulation has reached one day's worth of production, it will automatically stop. We do have the option of continuing to run our simulation by just clicking the Start button again, in which case it will override our one day end time and simulate continuously again. We'll go ahead and double click our drain, select Type Statistics, and we will see that we have had a total throughput of 1,436 parts. Remember that these are 1,436 parts based upon a production environment that has 0% failure rate, which is not very realistic, is it? We'll make a mental note of these 1,436 parts for reference as we move forward. Many of you might be thinking, I can do all of this in Excel. That may very well be true, but here is where we start to establish some clear differences in how plant simulation will help us go above and beyond static planning tools like Excel. Let's bring a little further realism to our model, because we all know the availability of a production line can vary. To do this, we need to adjust the availability setting under the failure section of our single proc objects. Because of plant simulation structure, we actually have two methods of accomplishing this change. First, we would be adjusting each individual child object, similar to what we did earlier when we looked at the individual object parameters. The second method, the one we'll use here, is to adjust the parent object. This takes us a level up from the child and allows us to modify all of our single proc objects at one time. To do this, we right-click the single proc object in our toolbox under Material Flow. Once there, we can select the Failures tab and change our availability to 80% with a Mean Time to Repair MTTR, of 8 minutes. We can now double-click a single proc in the model, select Failures, and see that my change has been applied. If we double-click another single proc, we'll see the settings have been applied there as well. You still have the ability to modify any of the individual single proc objects. Just change the values at the child level, and you see the box here on the right changed to yellow with a minus in it. This reminds us that this object has deviated from the settings that we have established at the parent level. To go back to the parent level settings, we just click on the box and it will turn green again. And we can click Apply and see the settings return. OK, it's time to run our simulation again. I'll reset the previous run and then click Start. Immediately, we notice two of our status indicators on our single proc objects are showing red, indicating that there are failures. We will see that we are only producing 829 parts, quite a drop from the 1,436 parts we were producing at 100% availability. All of this was very easily achieved with a few simple parameter changes as opposed to researching and developing some very complex mathematical formulas that may or may not drive Excel accurately.